It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by most exercises and workouts, whether they be running, biking, elliptical, rowing machine, traditional weightlifting, or even CrossFit, do not give you a balanced workout. And when you do workouts that neglect even one area, you're out of balance, resulting in pain and injury as well. Achieve your goals with the fitness program your chiropractor would love. Visit chrisjenke.com slash pod to watch the free video. Hello and welcome to Health in the Real World. I'm Chris Jenke and I'm joined today by Max Schmidt. Max, thanks for joining us today on Health in the Real World. Thank you, Chris, for the invitation and the kind welcome. Absolutely. It's my Absolutely. pleasure to be here. Well, this is one of the, the great things. You know, you're in Munich and I'm in California and we're able yes. to communicate through this magical thing called Zoom. And I'm I'm grateful for the technology. So introduce yourself and and who you are and, and what you're doing right now. Okay, so as you said, I am from Germany, from Munich in the south of Germany. And um, so in my childhood, I was not, in my early childhood, not interested in sports. It was um, until Olympic games came to my hometown in 1972 that I got interested. And so I was motivated also in sports classes and found out I was fast, I was good in long jump, in swimming. Then my interest was there, and I remembered this a few years later in high school when I had a crisis in the school because I was too lazy and <laughs> had to decide to find a motivation. And so I came to the idea to become a teacher for sports. I needed to study for this, so I had the motivation then, and I realized this. I completed my education as teacher for high schools, but since I did not need new teachers, I did not employ new teachers. So I worked in other jobs like a rehab clinic. So I made experience there, worked in a project, school sports and sports clubs, and self-employed with health-related sports. But then went to Thailand. I worked uh, mainly as language teacher, uh, mostly for German, but also a bit for English but always stay connected to sports, trained every day, almost every day, and did my personal trainer education by the American Council of Exercise in Bangkok and uh, tried Graf Maga, tried Muay Thai, the Thai boxing in Thailand. And then I decided in 2017 to return to Germany. And nowadays I'm here as a personal trainer and I have a second leg, uh, professional leg, that is teaching German for foreigners. That is my experience, it's my first job to be safe. That was very helpful in the Corona time, this lockdown, right. to have here the opportunity to have more incomes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you want to diversify the income streams. For So for the fitness, so now you're, you're a personal trainer, uh, ACE, right? ACE, American Council for Exercise. American Council for Exercise certified. And I have some first qualifications from Strong First for Kettlebell, the level oh, one. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, certified and functional movement screen. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's some, that's, uh, those are some really good certifications. What, what do you find uh, with your clients? What are some some common issues that people have when they come to see you? Like what is usually the first step in, in helping them build their strength from that foundation? So uh, you mean how the process is running when somebody is contacting me, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, there's a consultation talk first so that I can see what is the current status of the person. Uh, what are their um, ideas when they want to start uh, an exercise program and want to start with me so that I can find out what are their goals, what are their likes in the activities, 
and then I can have uh, by this already a first assessment to think about the program and then we can find out if we can work together and then can start uh, according to this first assessment. Yeah, yeah. What's, uh, how, how do you balance this? When I, when I first became a trainer, it was all about balancing my own personal fitness with helping others. It, how do you balance your own, you know, your own taking it, trying to take it to the next level versus your clients? Like, is there a strategy that you have around this? Yeah, of course, uh, because the clients, every client is different. So individual programs for the clients, not, not uh, uh, a routine program. So I design my programs according to the client. And the same I do for myself. So I have my goals, what I want to reach and work on this. For example, for the uh, strong first level two in kettlebells or maybe the body weight or barbell certification. So I make the training plan according also to my goals. Yeah. What is, what is uh, your particular program? Like, what are you focused on right now for your own workouts? Uh, and, then, and then how frequently do you work out? How intensely do you go? Like, what does yours look like mm -hmm. on a more specific okay. basis? So, uh, yeah, I, I'm focused on the modalities of Strong First, what we have there. So I'm practicing the techniques for the level two and also for the strength test and still, of course, work on the snatch test, the five-minute snatch test, which is required already for level one. And uh, then also... Uh, thinking about the barbell and sometimes train with the barbell and also with body weight. So I mix it up, uh, these uh, modalities. And then uh, let's see about the schedule and when I will uh, enroll for such a certification class. Uh, and so I do it in a planned way, of course. Yeah. For this, I'm a trainer or a coach. Yeah. And my, my planning is very different to what I did maybe 20, 25 years ago. And uh, here I came to the right place with Strong First as Pavel Zatzolin, the founder of Strong First and the chairman. Um, he, can, he came from the Soviet Union as a physical instructor of the special force in the army there. And um, he has done years long research about Soviet methodology and training methods. And I did some courses also with him, like Strong Endurance, Second Wind, or with Fabio Sonin, also master instructor from Strong First about Plant Strong, the Soviet strength training methodology, where some world records still exist nowadays from the 70s. So it's wow. a very advanced program. Yeah. And uh, it's very different to what I did. So I also tended in my younger years to say, hey, I must work as hard as I can. Otherwise, I will not have an effect. Or the training was not worth the time. Right. So I did way too intensive, way too long training sessions. And uh, so I wonder how I could do all my things. Right, right. Survive. But probably my younger years helped me. And so I can say nowadays, uh, so I'm age 60 now, I feel much more energetic and uh, I perform in, in some uh, fields better than at my age of 25 or 30 because I was under continuous overtraining that time and nowadays with more knowledge with more experience and uh, what I have learned uh, especially in the last years from Strong First so yeah. I my doses of training are much better according to my status and I see the progress yeah I think that's a good thing to always keep in mind what 
So the overtraining, what did, what did that look like for you? Were you just like working out too much or too long or were you yes. doing like repetitive, like pose, pose, pose yeah. too much and too long. And, uh, I, I, of course I had studied sports and sports sciences. I knew about this, uh, event of overtraining, but I, uh, you know, the tendency are too ambitious in younger years and you say, Hey, uh, I can do this. I, I don't have to rest now. I, I do the same or even, even more in the next training session. And uh, you are not really fully recovered from the training session before. When you do this in repeated times, you get into the overtraining. Right. And right. What, so yeah. what does it look like? How did you, how did you come back from that? And what does your workout look like now? Like, are you, do you have like a time limit? Or do you go based on how are you feeling? How, like, how do you know, how do you gauge that? I guess is my question. Okay. Uh, so I, for myself, I do some measurements also. So I use uh, Omega Wave, I check about my status. Uh, I don't know, do you know Omega Wave? It's coming from uh, the Soviet Union, but then uh, there were some sports scientists went from the Soviet Union to America when the Cold War ended. Okay. Since they uh, constructed uh, with the computer technology in the West, uh, the device, but it was incredibly expensive at that time. I think $10,000 for a single person to measure. Wow. Uh, so a device. But uh, I found it uh, so two, three years ago. I saw on the, web, on the website they have this device and now affordable. And you measure your EEG, so your brain waves, and uh, uh, the uh, from your heart uh, the values, and then it has algorithms to calculate your current status, so it can tell you what is uh, suggested for this day, if you should rest or do low intensity and uh, low volume training or you can on good days you can do strength training or uh, it, it tells you where you are work. with your recovery can can you yes. can you spell that I'm, I'm just going to google it real quick. Uh, omega uh, yeah o m e g a omega and then uh, the next word is wave so the wave like in the sea so w a v e this omega wave is such a device yeah Okay. Yeah, I want to check but that out. Uh, there are also simpler ways uh, you can also buy your heart rate, uh, so you can see it's elevated. And uh, so, I, but yeah, I that, can that, say also by your feeling, you have some feeling uh, after more than 40 years I'm training when I started to train regularly, when I had the goal to become a teacher for sports and wanted to be prepared for all kinds of sports I had to deal with. Uh, so it's 42 years ago and uh, since this time I almost trained every day. So some experience I have got. So I have also some feeling how is it today? What can I do? Right. But I limit normally my training sessions if I have some strength and conditioning part. So I rarely go over let's say 70 minutes or so, that's the upper limit. And it's, it depends how intensive is the training also. So if more intensive than shorter, uh, the longer training sessions nowadays I do only if I work on technique, but that's then I have sufficient rest intervals between the repetitions right. because I'm focusing on the quality of the uh, performance and for you must be fresh. Got it. Well, that's fantastic. That's, that's great that you've come into this point where you're, you're more aware of your body and it's, yes. it's cues and it's, it's always communicating with you. And so you're able to uh, create a workout program that not only, you know, it's not only a plan, but it's also yes. taking into your, into account your feedback of how you're progressing yes. in the plan, making right. sure you don't overdo it. And, yes, uh, no instant and, program said I follow the program no matter how I feel today or so. So I always take into account how is it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. 
That's that's uh, very powerful. Well, uh, Max, give us uh, some closing remarks. W what uh, types of recommendations would you give to people on on a big picture as far as how they can get healthy? You know, whether it's starting or continuing, any kind of motivation that you would you would give people. Mm. I think very important is to have um, an idea what you want to achieve, that you have a goal, and, uh, and it must be a realistic goal. That is very important also. Not to think about the world-class athlete and trying to uh, get like such a person, which is uh, a very rare case then uh, I think very important is also to be patient. That is a, a problem uh, with many fitness enthusiasts who want to achieve their goal in one day or one week, which is not possible. Uh, so you must take time and be patient to get to your goal and to have sustainable success in your exercise. Yeah, absolutely. and I think uh, I would recommend, and it's not just to advertise myself, but it's nowadays with internet, it's not so easy to find reliable resources where you can get information how to train successfully and in a safe way. So uh, I would suggest to hire a personal trainer and uh, get at least the base of trainings and by the advice of the personal trainer. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Well, that's a good segue. How does somebody get in touch with you? How do they contact you? Website, social media, yes. email address? There are several ways. Yeah. So first, you mentioned my website. So my website is www.maxmodernwell.com. Then I have a Facebook page, Max Modern Well, another Facebook page uh, for the self-defense company Munich. So I have also a branch for self-defense, so from the self-defense company. And uh, you can find me also under the Strong First website, www.strongfirst.com. There is uh, a, a button for find an instructor. Then you go to the country list, Germany in my case. Then a list will open with certified instructors from Germany. And my name is Maximilian Schmid, Munich. And you click on this name and then a page will open with a picture of mine and some text and contact information. Nice. Sounds good. Well, I'm on your website right now, maxmodernwell.com. And yeah, this sounds great. You're, you definitely have a very balanced approach to health and fitness. I like, you know, it's, you got to push hard enough, but you can't overdo it. There is a, yes. a sweet spot in the middle. You're 60 years old. You're still going. That's fantastic. Yes. <laughs> this is yes. a, you're definitely a role model for people um, in, the, in the health and wellness space. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on today and uh, great meeting you. Uh, again, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Invited me. <laughs> thank you <yeah>. very much. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Maximilian Schmidt. Uh, again, this is Chris Janke, Health in the Real World. Thank you so much, Max, for coming on today. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.